trending uh, again. St. Louis Blues player Jay Baumeister. Uh, remember we talked about him collapsing on the bench on the first period of a game against the Anaheim Ducks. That game was postponed, and we said we'd keep you up on all the information there. Well, their GM, Doug Armstrong, said Armstrong classified the early results of the test that went on as very positive. So Bowmeister has been placed on IR. The Blues play their next game in Las Vegas on Thursday. So very positive so far. They're still running more tests, and he has been put on injured reserve. The music world. Oh, boy. The Backstreet Boys had an appearance on Watch What Happens Live and hosted by Andy Cohn. And the boys were asked what they thought about NSYNC and sync singer Justin Timberlake saying basically he's not interested in touring with his former band. Well, their response was, well, maybe when we're done with our tour, we can uh, do a tour with NSYNC. Well, uh, Jason, you're our, you're our music guy. Mike, I know you, you guys all do this on your first and last had your... Your Backstreet Boys uh, Friday, yeah, Friday. Yeah. Backstreet well, thanks Boys. For, thanks for honoring the institution with your dismissal they, there. Whatever. The Backstreet Boys put on a great show. One of the things that they do that's different when they tour with other acts. They did this with New Kids on the Block. Is instead of being like, here's the New Kids set, here's the Backstreet set. They just bring all of the the different acts out for different songs throughout the whole course of the night. It is a great show. So if you're telling me I get in sync without JT because he's not going anywhere near that. But it's in con- in concert with the Backstreet Boys. I'm all They're in. Cool. I, I already saw them do this with Nelly and Florida Georgia Line. That's great too. Give, give me the two. I mean, preeminent boy bands of my childhood. The battle was in sync and Backstreet Boys. What better way to close the door on this than by bringing them together? All right. Well, wow. that's a possibility down the road. We shall see. I know two fanboys here who are really going to dig that. Well, Antonio Brown does seem to be on the apology tour. Um, again, we, you, you wonder how real is it, but he continues to do it. This time, to his former quarterback in Ben Roethlisberger, he posted a picture of Roethlisberger smiling and slapping the back of Brown's helmet when the two played together, along with the caption, this is Antonio Brown's caption, that praised Roethlisberger. The caption said, mostly you, a little bit of me, Brown wrote. I never realized how good I had it. Caught up in my emotion with everyone coming after me. I really apologize for my actions. Sincerely, man, it's never been another connection like what we've done in the past decade. I appreciate you. Sincerely, A.B. Very, very interesting. Again, he's doing a lot of apologizing. We've seen it before. And then go back the other way, maybe this time around. Uh, He could be sincere about it and meaningful with it. And we'll see what that brings in the future. That's what's trending. Golick and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. Jason Fitz in for Trey with Mike Golick, Mike Golick Jr. And you said something uh, You said something earlier that I kind of uh, still has my mind racing, <laughs> not about bats, but about uh, Michigan State. And I've, I've never really thought of it this way because of your college football recruitment, Mike, and the process you went through and how different it is than what other kids go through. Well, I, I just always – kind of had this in the back of my mind because again for anyone that missed it yesterday Mel Tucker who was the coach at Colorado for the last year took the job at Michigan State and now because of the timing of all this which again lies with Michigan State as the patient zero in this but he took the better job he took the job with more money and resources in it and Colorado at this point is one of those jobs that you kind of know you're a stepping stone at this point like if a job like that comes loose someone is going to take it there's a job higher on the food chain and dad I said this because and I, I, it's going to it's going to sound pompous to but, say this, but it's but true. It's the truth. Notre Dame is one of those jobs that is not a stepping stone job. When you get to <clears throat> Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio that area State, of school, Ohio that, yeah. State, yeah. you yeah. like those aren't stepping stone jobs. And so when I committed to Notre Dame, I committed to Charlie Weiss at the time. And I said, short of you know what ended up happening and Charlie getting fired, I was going to have that coach because there was nowhere he was going to go in college football outside of that. And I wondered aloud, I don't know what it would be like when you committed, let's say you're Ed Oliver, when you commit to Tom Herman in Houston back in the day. And you have to kind of go, all right, well, I know I'm going to this school for this coach, but if they get a better opportunity, they're probably going to take it because we're not that job. I don't know what that's like Like and how that affects the decision-making process. That's a different variable because when you go into Notre Dame, I would presume you're thinking if things go well, we win a national championship. If things go poorly, coach gets fired. Everybody's got a The only place you're losing your coach is the NFL. Right. And so in college, you're looking at it like, let's say if you were a Memphis kid that was talking to Mike Norvell uh, the last couple of years before he went to Florida State this year, you're walking in saying, well, if things go poorly – 
coach is going to get fired. That's true anywhere. If things go well, coach is going to leave. Like inevitably, mm-hmm. if I if I go in and do what I think I'm capable of, I'm going to lose my coach. Like that's just got to be a different mindset in the recruiting process. Well, that's why I said it's changed. Recruiting has changed a lot since I was recruited, since Mike and Jake were recruited, and since recruits are guys being recruited now. You players are just smarter, and you have to understand that guy sitting in your living room may not be there. Again, Nick Saban, going to be there as long as he wants to be there. You know, uh, uh, Dabo Sweeney, going to be there as long as he wants to be there. I get it. But coaches that we're talking about here, not everybody's a five-star or four-star recruit. You get re- recruited by schools where they are, and they don't like to hear it, but they are. They're stepping stone uh, situations. And so now, to me, it's more on the player and their parents when the guy sitting in that locker room or that that uh, that living room selling his program, you have to know. You have to know in your head he may not – you have to go in knowing he may not be there. Well, and, and that's the difficult part, and I think why people advocate so strongly for – player rights when it comes to things like transfer movement because what this is also exacerbated by is and Mark D'Antonio is not the example because he had a long (laughs) stint at Michigan State but in general the turnover happens a lot quicker now like you do not have as much time as a head coach in college football at the big time level anymore to establish go in and do what you want to do and lay it out and so with that cycling over year after year you get more of the situations where Mel Tucker's at Colorado for a year. Willie Taggart's bouncing around at these schools. These tend to become more of the norm than not. Yeah, and even in schools like, you, you know, Tom Herman in Texas, you mentioned Tom Herman earlier. He goes to Texas. You think, okay, that's going to last forever or as long as he wants to. It, there, There is such a shorter leash on everything. It only takes so many years of Texas not being back before Tom Herman's not back, right? Or, but even there, you go there and Texas is the job. Like, right, you know when right. Tom Herman got there, he's not going to leave you. And I think that's the difference, what you said. If things go bad, we all know how it ends. If things go well, you got to worry too, which is strange. Yeah, and that's a, that's got to be a difficult mindset to be in, especially the way college coaches move around. And, and again, we're not faulting the, the coaches at that point, no. but it's part of the reality. The Astros set to make a statement on their sign-stealing scandal. We'll get the report from a man on the scene next. Go look at Wingo, ESPN Radio, moving to ESPN News.